Want to build your own clock with your own custom photograph? We'll show you how after this. I'm Kyle from Adventures at Home, and in this video, we're gonna show you how to make your own custom clock. All you're gonna need is some pallet boards, some stick-on vinyl, and a clock mechanism. Let's get to work. Okay, step number one is gonna be to just cut the ends off of our pallet boards to get rid of those nail holes. You can just take these right over to your saw and cut the nail holes off wherever. I'm choosing to actually mark these out just because I'll probably use the ends of those for something else. All right, let's just go ahead and knock those nail holes off the ends of the board. Now that we have those cut, we can measure the width of the boards. And then because we want to make this square, we're gonna use that as a reference point for how long to cut these boards off. Now the width was about 10 and 3 quarters and I'm gonna cut all these at 11 and a half right now. So we have a little bit extra to trim off the ends. That way when we're all done, we can square everything up on this project. And back to the chop saw. As you can see, I finally got the dust collection system hooked back up to my chop saw again. At some point, I'll have to do a video for you guys on how I set up a very simple and relatively inexpensive dust collection system in my basement workshop. Now we can lay them all together about where we want them. We are going to use dowel or fluted dowels to join these together so we can lay them out. We're going to use three in each board so we can mark on each board where their location is going to be. The location on the board itself doesn't have to be exact, but we do want to make sure both boards get marked so the dowels line up perfectly after we drill and install them. And you are going to want to make sure that you do mark the boards A and B that way you know which board goes to which. Now with the jig we're going to be using we are going to need a square line straight, aclo straight across where we made our marks so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Man I drop things a lot. Now we can use our jig to drill holes out for our dowels. This jig makes it super simple and makes sure that the dowels are perfectly perpendicular to the work face. If you guys want to check out this dowel jig joining kit that I'm using, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. This one's super simple and makes you doing dowel joints very simple. Now after we did that for all the boards, we can just pop the dowel pins in and we're just going to do a dry fit right now to make sure everything lines up the way that we want it. That one's looking good. Now one of the disadvantages of having different sized dowels all thrown in the same bin is sometimes you pick out the wrong ones. 
One of these days I'll get over the top organized and have them all in their own separate baggies or bins. Looks good. Now we can go ahead and take those apart. Yeah, you'll probably need pliers to pull those out. Now we can put a dab of glue into each one of the holes for the dowels. Then we can just run a bead of glue down the face of the boards. Once we have that done, we can just join the boards together. While I'm doing this, I do want to remind you guys, if you do like this video, Make sure you give us a thumbs up button down below. And if you like content like this and want to keep seeing it, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Any support that you want to give us means the world to us. Now you can see it takes a little bit of force to get these together, which is great. We're going to have a nice strong joint when we're finished. Now we'll just add some clamps just to hold everything semi-rigid while it dries. It doesn't have to be perfect, but once you have the clamps on, you notice it can kind of bend the boards up a little bit, so we'll just make sure that you go back and flatten those out before you leave it to completely dry. Now that that's dry, we can run this through the table saw to square everything up. I'm going to want it square to the top face of the board. That way the clock doesn't look slanted when it's on the wall. So I'm going to use my miter gauge to run the first edge through. And then I can use the fence on the saw to run the other edge of the board through. And we can get it perfectly square at that point. Now the bottom of the clock is going to be perfectly square. and I'm not too concerned about that because I do want to leave the rough edge on that board. Once that's done, we can just sand everything down. Now I'm using only 120 grit sandpaper to start off and I'm just going to lightly kind of knock everything down. You don't want to go crazy with the sanding here because you'll kind of ruin that pallet board finish that we're going for on the clock face. So just give everything a nice sanding to knock some of the real rough stuff down but not to completely finish the face of it. Next step, we're going to find the center of our clock face and we're going to mark that and that's where we're going to drill our hole for the clock mechanism spindle to go through. I'm going to use a center punch just to make sure the drill, pit, drill bit doesn't wander on me at all when I go to start this hole. For this one we're going to be using an 11 30 seconds drill bit and it's just slightly smaller than the clock mechanism but just make sure you check yours to find the right size. Now we can apply just a satin clear coat. This will give something for the vinyl to adhere to better rather than just the bare wood. While that's drying, we can move upstairs and we can use our Cricut machine to cut out our vinyl decal. Now you guys don't need to use one of these, of course. You can just buy some adhesive vinyl and you can use a scissors or a hobby knife to cut your own out. Now we're back and we're going to take a quarter inch piece of board and we're going to use that as a backer not only to adapt this to the correct thickness for the clock mechanism that we're using but this is also going to give us a flat face across the entire back of the clock for the clock mechanism to sit on. 
We did get a little bit of waves in it just because of the way, you know, the unfinished pallet boards. So by putting this on there, we can make a nice flat surface for the clock mechanism to sit on. Once we're done there, we can lay this where we want it. We're just going to mark it on the board so we can find it again. <coughs> now we are going to put eight screws in this and we're going to mark four in the top board and bottom board, but we're not going to put any in the middle board. And that way when we tighten this down to the top and bottom board but not the center this will pull everything straight and give us a flat straight board across from the top to the bottom and if you would put some screws in the center it could pull it down and potentially leave the same waves as the board face already so we'll just use the center punch again and then we can countersink the holes. Now I always do my countersinking before I drill the pilot holes. This is purely preference, but I feel like I get a better and cleaner looking countersunk hole if I do this before I drill my pilot holes. Now after making sure everything's lined up, we can drill our pilot holes. I mark the depth I need to go with a piece of blue painter's tape on the bit. I'm just going to secure two opposite corners down first and then go back and drill the rest of them. Now we can apply some glue. We can get that lined up once again. And we can just drive in those two screws on either corner of our board. I am going to use a screwdriver to drive all of these screws in. I don't want to use too much pressure and potentially risk going through the front face of the clock. So we'll check the front. Everything looks good. Now we can go back and drill the rest of our pilot holes making sure we don't go past our tape mark on the drill bit. And now we can just go and install the rest of the screws in to hold the back on. We'll just lay a backer board down now and we're just going to change the drill bit out to the one we used to drill for the spindle and we'll just run it through and that way we'll have a perfectly lined up hole between the front face of the clock and our new backer board. Now we're just going to rough up the clear coat on the front face of that and that'll give the vinyl something to adhere to better. I'm just using 320 grit sandpaper here. Once that's done, we'll just take a piece of tack cloth and wipe the entire surface down and this will just help remove any dust particles. And here's our finished vinyl decal that we're going to be putting on there. We're going to lay it onto the clock face where we want it. And before we go taking any of the backing or anything like that off, we're going to mark down exactly where we want it. So I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to mark just on the clear transfer paper. And then once I have that, I'm going to go back around with a mechanical pencil. I'm going to mark where those Sharpie marks meet onto the wood. That way, after we get this on, I can just go back with an eraser and just take off those real light pencil marks that I used to line this up.
Now we can start by removing the backing on our vinyl. On our vinyl. So the trick is to press this onto the transfer tape and then pull the backing off. Now we haven't got real good at this, so any of you Cricut users out there, feel free to leave us any comments down below on how we can improve this technique. What you kind of have to do is use that scraper to press the vinyl onto the transfer tape and then pull the backing off. The problem here being that the vinyl wants to stick to the backing more than it does the transfer tape so you kind of got to go inch by inch and pull a little bit up and then use the scraper to hold everything down and then pull it up and hold it down and pull everything up and so on and so forth. So why don't we jump ahead to where we have it almost off. There you have it. Now after a lot of work, probably more work than it needs to be, we we're able to pull the vinyl backing off and now we're just left with our final vinyl decal on our transfer paper. Now we can lay this down, going ahead and lining up the Sharpie marks with the pe mechanical pencil marks on the board. This isn't going to adhere immediately, so you do have a little bit of wiggle room. It won't fully stick until you press it down. So once you have that in place, it's going to be the same way to get the vinyl now off of the transfer tape and onto the clock face you're gonna to have to use the scraper tool press everything down and pull the transfer tape up and it's gonna be the same way for us where you kinda of gotta go inch by inch we're just gonna now give everything one more good clear coat and this will just hold, help hold the vinyl down and make sure that it doesn't lift off in the future now when I'm doing this I'm gonna just lightly spray down and kind of let gravity pull it down that way the force of the aerosol doesn't lift any of the vinyl up. Alright now we can install the clock mechanism. Make sure you follow the instructions on whichever one that you end up getting. For this one we're just going to put the rubber washer on the back and then notice how we drilled our center hole to basically just fit the clock spindle that way we can screw it in and that'll help hold it onto the clock even tighter if you guys do need a suggestion for a clock mechanism I can also put a link to that in the description down below that you guys can check out Once that's set, we're going to put a brass washer on. And following the brass washer, washer, we're going to put a brass nut. After that, we can put the our hand on that's going to press down over this little plastic shaft that is cased around the spindle. It's going to take a little bit of effort to press it down on, but it's going to almost feel like you're going to break it. But just use a finger on either side and just press down gently and it'll pop into place. And you'll also see that I removed the plastic um, protective coating on the hands before we put them on the clock. Once you have these on the clock, it's kind of a pain to get that protective coating off. Next we can put the minute hand on. This is a slotted hole in it, so it can only fit on the spindle one way. 
says to line everything up at zero zero. So that's what we're doing. Now a tiny little brass nut goes on to hold the minute hand in place. Because these are brass, make sure you don't cross thread them. And if nothing is spinning on with relative ease, don't try and force it. Because brass is a soft metal, you can't strip them easily. Once that's done, the second hand just pops into place on top and holds them all on. Last but not least, we'll just install the battery. And everything appears to be working good. Second hand's ticking away. So here it is, the final product. Your own custom clock. Relatively cheap and easy. Now we made this for Ryan's room as we're gonna redo it as he gets a little bit older and we're gonna have more of an outdoor theme to it. So stay tuned for some more videos where we make some more projects like this. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below. And if you wanna keep seeing more content like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you want to be notified when our next video comes out, make sure you ring the bell as well. We appreciate any support that you'd like to give us. And until next video, I'm Kyle, helping you create your own adventure at home. <laughs>